A new report out of Press Progress showcases Canada's failure in addressing offshore tax havens, even after the Liberal government claimed that they would be doing more to address this. So let me break down some of this information. According to data newly released by Stats Canada, Canadian corporations held a staggering $353 billion in 12 of the world's biggest tax haven destinations in 2018. At the top of the list, Canadian corporations report a holding $90 billion in the tiny European nation of Luxembourg alone. That's up $8.4 billion since 2017. Luxembourg is followed by Barbados at $65 billion, Bermuda at $47 billion, and the Cayman Islands at $40 billion. Now, to give you an idea of how insane this is, Luxembourg only has a population of about 600,000 people. 600,000 people, yet they're the third top destination for corporate investment behind the US and UK, two countries where you actually expect corporate money to be invested. And while these Canadian corporations are sending $90 billion to Luxembourg, there's $56 billion going back. Why? Well, Toby Sanger, executive director of the watchdog group Canadians for Tax Fairness, says Corporate Canada is gaming the international corporate tax system by shifting profits between shell companies set up in multiple countries. Corporations are easily able to set up subsidiaries in tax havens where they can shift their profits, Sanger told Press Progress. They book all their profits in low or no tax jurisdictions while reporting no profit in countries such as Canada where they actually carry on their activities and make their real profits. So the bottom line here is that the wealthiest Canadians and the wealthiest corporations continue screwing the rest of us. As I've said again and again and again, the fight right now isn't really left-right because both the Liberal Party and the Conservative Party have engaged in allowing this kind of behavior to continue. The actual battle is top-down. It's the wealthy versus everybody else. So the people at the top have a good laugh when there is a fight between the Conservatives and the Liberals, because they win either way. So the actual issue here is what these parties are doing to enable this kind of behavior to continue. Meanwhile, you have the NDP and the Greens actually willing to, uh, at least in terms of the rhetoric, <laughs> be tough on this issue, uh, in the case of the NDP more so. So let me just um, share what the NDP has been saying recently about this, and then I'll, I'll also uh, get to the Greens. So uh, recently, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh tweeted this out, saying, Decades of liberal conservative governments have rigged the economy. Billionaire insiders have grown their wealth by $20 billion with stock options, loopholes, and offshore tax havens. What do most Canadians get? An unprecedented housing crisis and record family debt. And there's also this uh, recent story from Advisor's Edge that broke it down, uh, broke the NDP's plan down, saying the, the federal NDP's fiscal plan to focus on corporate tax avoidance. The party intends to take aim at Canada's so-called tax gap. And I'll link to that article below the video if you want to read more about what the NDP are are planning to, or how they're planning to address this. Now, let me also show you the Green Party. So as I said, the Green Party has been less vocal about this issue. Um, so uh, I really only found a tweet from seven, uh, 2017 from Elizabeth May, the Green Party leader on this. So she tweeted out saying, why does uh, the Canada Revenue Agency waste our tax dollars auditing students? Why not go after those with offshore tax havens? But I will say that their 2015 platform did include uh, uh, a way to address this. So uh, showing here, this is a, a screenshot from their platform saying the Green Party supports closing loopholes on offshore tax havens, estimated to be sheltering at least $12 billion from Canadian tax authorities. So you have two parties here that are willing to address this issue. Yet Canadians keep voting for the Conservatives or the Liberals, which have just continued again and again and again to protect the wealthiest Canadians and the largest corporations.